Hi everyone. I purchased the MacBook Air M1 with 8 gigs of memory and a 256 gig SSD back in January and thought I would share my thoughts on it. And also compare it to Lenovo P14s since I had one at the same time for comparison. If you know me, you'll know that I'm not a fan of Apple products because in my opinion they're overpriced, provide more form than function, poorly engineered, and not the easiest to repair. Also, to preface this video, I've used Apple products over time, but I've always ended up preferring PCs and Android phones due to personal preferences. In addition, I'm sure everyone has seen what a MacBook Air looks like, and you all have seen other MacBook videos, so I'll primarily be focusing on my thoughts on using this laptop for the time I've had it. I may not be used to how things work on a Mac, but I found it counterintuitive and counterproductive to use especially when it comes to doing more than your normal everyday task. Honestly, I have more of a like-hate relationship with this laptop, and yes, not love-hate. Here's why. So despite the fact that the keyboard isn't very good, but apparently better than the older butterfly-style keyboards, the fact that the memory and the SSD is soldered on the board and not replaceable, needing an app to use anything that's not an Apple device, the stupid force touch thing, only two USB-C ports, which is essentially limited connectivity which also means dongles up the wazoo, and it not being the most ergonomic laptop to use. I'll admit that Apple got a few things right, which some are attributed to the M1 architecture. The fact that Apple is using a 2560 by 1440 resolution 13 inch screen is awesome, and it's actually pretty difficult to find a PC laptop with a 2560p screen. If you're looking for a 13 to 14 inch PC laptop, you're more than likely going to find a 1080p or 4K screen with very few, if any, laptops with 2560p screens. Next, thin and light PC laptops have abysmal speakers, and the MacBook Air somehow manages to have decent speakers. I wouldn't say they're the most amazing speakers in the world, but pretty impressive for a 13 inch laptop, and PC laptops need to step up their game in this aspect. Now on to benefits relating to the M1 architecture. If you're doing basic activities such as watching videos, web browsing, listening to music, honestly any laptop will do and there's no benefits to getting an M1 Mac in regards to performance. However, video encoding performance is actually ridiculously fast compared to let's say my AMD Ryzen 1700 PC or even the P14S with an AMD Ryzen Pro 4750U CPU. One thing I would like to test in the future is how the video quality between an M1 MacBook and a PC laptop such as the P14S varies if any. My concern is that the video encoding quality may suffer from the increase in encoding performance. By the way, I'm talking about the M1 encoding at 175 frames per second versus about 50 frames per second with the same encoding profile in DaVinci Resolve. If anyone is interested in this, comment below. The last thing I want to touch on is that the battery life is indeed pretty good, and I'd probably get about 8 to 10 hours of battery life. 
However, the battery meter seems a little inaccurate and seems to take longer for the battery meter to go down when the battery is closer to 100% versus when the battery's life is lower. I also wanted to point out that I honestly don't understand why some people think that Macs are better products for let's say video editing or music production, especially for pre-M1 Macs, because the internals are the same as a PC and not everyone uses Apple software. Also considering the fact that there's only two ports which one is used for charging, how would a power user really be able to fully utilize the laptop's capabilities when you only have one port for connectivity? Sure, you can argue that, oh, a dock will take care of that issue, but that's an extra accessory to carry around, and you're also spending more unnecessary money. Also, consider laptops like a Dell XPS 13 or a Lenovo ThinkPad X13 that has all the connectivity you need. So why can't Apple do the same thing? Why do I have to conform to what Apple thinks I need? I do see that if someone needs a laptop that's portable, does everyday activities, and they're already part of the Apple ecosystem, then sure, a Mac makes sense. So what growing pains do I have switching from a PC to Mac, and why did I end up keeping the M1 MacBook Air? The biggest annoyances, as I mentioned earlier, are that you need an app for pretty much everything, and things still don't work quite correctly or the same as, let's say, in Windows or Linux. For instance, I have a Pixel 4a 5G and I had to download Android file transfer to copy files to and from my phone to the MacBook. I also tried a few different methods to attach an NTFS external hard drive to the Mac and only a few folders and files showed up. Apparently I had to change permissions but that didn't seem to work and the drives were mounted read only. As for using Linux packages for development, since the M1 architecture is pretty new, not all Linux packages are ported over, so you'll need to use Rosetta. This also applies to some programs that haven't been ported over yet. Normal developer things such as using my SSH keys to log into remote computers doesn't work, and it says that my keys are in an invalid format, even though they work on my other computers. Again, why Apple? If you want people to use your products, make it easier to transition, not harder. Honestly, I'm hoping or waiting for someone to fully port Linux onto the M1 architecture, preferably Manjaro Linux so that I don't have to use Mac OS X. Then there's things such as the delete key, which has the same behavior as the backspace key on a PC, which removes text to the left, but there's no actual delete key which delete characters to the right of what you're currently typing. And there's also no such thing as moving files, but just copying and deleting files. Maybe I'm just a newbie with Macs, but I've never figured this out and it's rather frustrating. So on to other observations I've noticed while using the MacBook Air. 8GB is usable, but I saw memory usage creep up to around 6 to 7 gigs with about 10 to 15 tabs open in Chrome and no other applications open. Some people say that Safari is more memory efficient and vice versa, but I still have yet to test this out. Maybe I'll get around to doing a video on this. 8GB is also good enough for video editing, but I wouldn't keep too many applications open even though the laptop will use swap memory when all 8 gigs are fully allocated. This however does result in a decrease in performance. I've only edited a few videos that are about 10 minutes in DaVinci Resolve with a few transitions and titles, but I could see Resolve using swap if someone edits longer videos or videos with more effects. The webcam is whatever, and like my other videos, laptops need to start including higher quality webcams. The touchpad is nice to use especially due to the larger physical size compared to other laptops, but other than that, I don't see the hype otherwise. To me it just seems to work like any other touchpad. I'm surprised that Apple actually decided to keep a headphone mic combo jack since I feel like they want everyone to use their tampon like looking AirPods. I don't think Macs are really any more intuitive than PCs and I find myself spending more time to do remedial tasks that I can't seem to find the equivalent of on a Mac. Although most people seem to like a laptop built out of metal, I'm still not a fan of the aluminum frame on the air, and the edge of the palm rest is sharp. Luckily the MacBook Air is slimmer than the MacBook Pro, so the ledge doesn't feel as sharp due to a thinner profile. 
Also, speaking of ergonomics, I wish the screen hinge would be able to fold flat to 180 degrees in case the laptop needs to be used at an abnormal angle. I don't like the fact that I need the dongle to connect anything to the laptop unless it's already USB-C, or I have to carry around a USB-C dock to connect, say, a USB card reader, a USB hard drive, Ethernet, HDMI, or really anything else. It's so freaking annoying. I haven't had any Bluetooth or Wi-Fi issues, but apparently updating Mac OS to 11.2 fixes these issues. Even though the LCD screen has a resolution of 2560 by 1440, just like Windows, screens are scaled up by default. For the MacBook Air, the screen is scaled to the equivalent resolution of 1440 by 900, which is terrible in my opinion. To make things worse, if you want to use 100% scaling, you have to download another freaking app to do so, and it isn't persistent. Also, I'm honestly not a fan of the glossy display since it smudges more easily and could potentially be more prone to damage and add weight to the laptop. I mainly kept the MacBook Air because the encoding performance is significantly better than the P14s, but also because of the higher resolution screen, better speakers, and battery life. The laptop running silent without a fan is an extra bonus, but again, if you're a power user and need to use the processor heavily, the thermal solution in the air isn't sufficient and is going to throttle. This of course means reduced performance. However, if the video encoding performance wasn't any better or that's say marginally better than the P14S, I would honestly have kept it over the MacBook Air. And yes, the keyboard and build quality of Lenovo laptops is that good. For me, despite the aforementioned pluses of the Air, the P14S is just so much better to live with every day. And I don't have to worry about transitioning from a PC to a Mac or downloading an app every time I'm trying to do anything on a Mac. I know I've mentioned some of these issues a few times already, but it's really that annoying to deal with. Fingers crossed the Ryzen 5000 series processors will perform better, or we'll see other companies introduce ARM-based architectures that rival the M1. Finally, considering the fact that I'm always a sucker for value, I was able to pick up a MacBook Air open box, so I didn't pay full price for it. If I did actually have to pay full price for this laptop, I honestly probably would have not considered the M1 Air. So would I recommend purchasing a MacBook M1 Air right now? Unless you really need the extra battery life or need the increased video performance, I would say stick with an Intel Mac if you have to have a Mac or choose a PC option such as the Dell XPS 13 if you want an Intel processor or Lenovo ThinkPad X13 AMD. I think that the M1 architecture isn't quite mature yet since it was just released and will require a bit more time until all issues are ironed out. Apple also announced that the next iteration of the M1 Mac laptop will have additional connectivity, which they honestly should have done years ago. I hope this gives you a different perspective on the M1 Air, especially as a PC user looking to switch to Macs. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.